welcome all of you i am dr arun joseph assistant professor in general surgery in moic medical college kolanjeri kochi today our topic for discussion is history taking we live in an era of investigative medicine now many a times a detailed history taking is considered waste of time and generally left to the junior most person in the unit before the advent of the profuse array of investigations these diseases were treated and were diagnosed by history taking and clinical examination how did they do it the those doctors of that time had perfected the art of history taking nowadays with investigations we can easily diagnose a case and history becomes less relevant in certain cases the result the medical teachers and students both neglect history taking we should understand that we may be able to diagnose easily with investigations but the psychological bond seeing the patient not as a case but as a person to see the patient as a whole all this comes from history taking today so today we will get into the basics of the art of history taking our objective today is that at the end of this presentation the student should be able to take a proper history and write a case record how will we go about in this topic this topic will be have basically two parts the first part will deal with how to take history from the patient and the second part deals with how to arrange into a case record during my first clinical posting i went and asked my senior how should i take history history his answer was first you learn to talk to the patient with a lot of silent gaps in between in between to understand the fact that we won't be able to talk to the patient continuously go alone and take history history multiple students taking history from a single patient the history taking skill will not improve in the initial period it doesn't matter which patient you take history whether it is an exam case or not at those periods a trauma patient will do because at that time at that time during our initial period we are developing our art of history taking rather than learning about the case so start by going alone while taking history it is preferable to be closer to the patient rather than across the table history sometimes while telling their history the patient cries and it is better to be closer to him to comfort the patient like a touch or a tap in the shoulder while taking history it is better to go in an orderly manner rather than haphazard history because it will become very difficult to organize later because at the end of the day you have to write the case sheet and present it so before going to further details we will have a look on our case sheet headings which will be personal details presenting complaints history of present illness past history personal history family history start history by asking personal details like name of the patient age sex occupation address sometimes you will find something interesting in the occupation name etc if you find anything interesting inquire more about it and understand the exact nature of what what the thing we doesn't understand talking to take history while taking history don't try to complete the case sheet then and there taking history and writing case sheet may go in the same heading format of presenting complaints history of present illness etc etc but that doesn't mean that both should happen simultaneously 
When we write a lot in between taking history, there are a lot of silences in between. The continuity is broken and the emotional bond failed to develop. It is better to jot down the points while talking to the patient and then elaborate later in the prescribed format. It is always better to start taking history by giving the patient the chance to explain rather than interrupting with questions. Then comes the open-ended questions. First it is the patient's own words, then comes the open-ended questions. Open-ended questions are like, suppose the patient has spoken about his abdominal pain. Ask him, how did the pain start? These questions help the patient to focus on more what we have to get for our diagnosis. The answers for these questions are generally 1 to 2 sentences long. Next comes the closed ended questions. The answer for these questions are either yes or no. For example, does the pain radiate to the back? The answer is yes or no. With the closed ended questions, we will be able to refine our symptom history and get the negative history. We will call this system for our convenience as the POC system. Patients on words, open ended questions, closed ended questions. The POC system. This is a broad format. We will ask the history to the patient as we have said earlier. In all these headings, we use the PACE POC system. While we taking the personal details, while we taking the presenting complaints, again we use the POC system. We ask, for the, we ask initially, in, ask initially to the patient and we will give him a chance to explain and hear the patient's own words, then go into the open-ended questions, closed-ended questions. Again in the history of present illness, past history, personal history and family history also we will follow this POC system. Presenting complaints. It is the reason for which the patient has come to the hospital. While recording presenting complaints, we should see that they are the main complaints and the duration of each complaint. It should be arranged in a chronological order. For example, a patient with appendicitis presents with abdominal pain and fever. The presenting complaints will look like abdominal pain 3 days, fever 1 day. The presenting complaints generally are 2 to 3 in number. Now coming to history of present illness. It is the elaboration of presenting complaints. Let me explain. Suppose this patient with cold has nasal discharge, cough, fever and sore throat. He has come on day 3 of starting of the symptoms. You see the patient at the day 3 cross section. These are the nasal discharge, sore throat, cough and fever. Since the cough and nasal discharge are increasing, the patient's chief complaints may be those. While inquiring more about the cough, the patient will say, how and when did it start? Its progress, aggravating and relieving factors, associated symptoms like fever. So, we should get the story of each of the symptoms and obtain the graph of each symptoms and their relations with each other in our mind. So, in history of present illness, there should be an elaboration of the presenting complaints, elaboration of associated symptoms. And at the end of the present illness, there should be a negative history, like no history of headache, earache, etc., etc., in our previous case, which will help in giving a direction to our history in order to reach a diagnosis or a provisional diagnosis. Now comes the past history. Again, use the POC system, patients on words, open-ended questions, closed-ended questions. Anyway, it should at least contain history of similar illness in the past, 
tuberculosis, bronchial asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, hypertension, diabetes, mellitus, coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular accidents, previous history of surgeries, accidents, jaundice, epilepsy, drug allergies, previous history of hospital admissions. Also, if there, these are positive, list them in the chronological order and ask about the medications the patient is on and the duration of the treatment. The components which come in personal history are sleep. We have to know whether the sleep is decreased or increased or there is an altered sleep rhythm. Appetite, diet, whether it is a vegetarian diet or a non-vegetarian diet or a mixed diet. Bowel habits like constipation, diarrhea or there is any change in the bowel habits. Bladder habits like if there is an incontinence or if there is a decreased flow. And finally, addictions. Let me elaborate a bit on addictions. Smoking. To understand the smoking, to understand the amount of smoking, it is better to express in pack years. That is, the number of cigarettes in the number of years divided by 10. 10 is the number of cigarettes in a pack. Suppose, patient A smokes 10 cigarettes per day for 15 years. The number of pack years is 10 into 15 divided by the 10, which is the cigarettes per pack, is equal to 15 pack years. Another patient B smokes 5 cigarettes, that is half a pack for 20 years, that is half into 20 is 10 pack years. The burden is more for which patient? It is for patient A who has 15 pack years of smoking. Next comes alcoholism. Well, asking about alcoholism, ask among the frequency like two pegs thrice a week. This will give us an insight of insight about the amount of alcohol the patient intake. But the cage questionnaire will give us an insight to the alcohol dependence. It is like C. Cutting down the amount. Have you ever felt you need to cut down on your drink, drinking? A. Annoyed. How? People annoyed you by criticizing your drinking? G. Guilty. Have you ever felt guilty about your drinking? E. Eye opener. Have you ever felt you, need, you needed a drink first thing in the morning to steady your nerves or get rid of a hangover? Any two of these questions positive means excessive drinking. An eye opener positive means dependence. Ask about pan chewing also. Coming to family history, I will say start by drawing a pedigree chart. How to draw a pedigree chart? In pedigree chart, we may see a male is drawn as square, female by circle and if sex is unknown by a diamond and the affected individuals are shaded. See how mating is depicted and the offsprings are born, male and the other female. See how identical twins and non-identical twins are being depicted. In case of a consanguineous marriage, we instead of a single line, we draw two lines. See how abortions are depicted by a triangle. Adoption is another tricky thing. This is how we depict adoption. See that Mr. and Mrs. Violet has the, had the, has the violet sun. See the type of arrows. He is adopted by the green father and the green mother. See the arrow, arrow direction in that case. So, so, in family history, draw a pedigree chart and describe it. Describe it. Previous history of similar illness in the family comes next. Then again comes the long list of tuberculosis, bronchial asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, 
coronary artery disease, artery disease, cerebrovascular accidents, previous history of surgeries and jaundice in the family. And mark these, mark against the corresponding individuals in the pedigree chart. If you find any aberration in the family, example, for example, elder sister not married, look for a cause, look for a cause. In brief, both you and the patient should be in a comfortable position before taking history. In general, use the POC system, the patient's own words, open-ended questions and the closed-ended question format. While taking history and writing case sheet, the order is personal details, presenting complaints, history of present illness, past history, personal history and family history. And at the end, present in a loud, clear voice and the person hearing you should be able to reach a few, di few differential diagnoses from your history. Thank you for your patient listening.